Hey everybody, I'm Thomas, and welcome to the first uh, making of video for uh, a game I'm working on called Crossover. Um, so these videos, they're going to be pretty, pretty casual. I'm just going to show different parts of uh, development of this game. Um, expect plenty of awkward silences and uh, cuss words and a loud clacky keyboards uh, while I figure this process out. Um, so, I'm currently working on a game called Crossover. Um, as you can see here, this is the uh, the Patreon page uh, sort of describing the game. And so, um, I guess the long and short of it is that a Crossover is a um, it's a mobile roguelike puzzler game. And so, you know, with a typical uh, roguelike, you get things like permadeath, uh, you explore a dungeon, you go deeper, you're killing enemies, um, you know, perhaps you have... Um, you know, a bunch of hit points, uh, the enemies have hit points, the enemies are hitting you, you're hitting them, uh, etc. However, what sort of makes this a puzzler is that the uh, the HP of all the characters involved are a lot lower. So with a typical, you know, roguelike, perhaps you have, um, you know, 20 HP and the enemy has 4, and the enemy hits for 2, and you hit for 5. So if you get hit by the enemy, you lose like 10% of your health. Um, but in this game, it's um, sometimes when you get hit, it's permanent death. And so your character starts with perhaps one or two or three hit points. Um, your enemies have, um, you know, perhaps one or two, four or six hit points. Um, there's uh, there's there's different rules which sort of describe um, how uh, characters and enemies can move and um, you know sort of the ways they interact. And so it's you know, that's why I call it a puzzler. It's it's like every single move uh, matters in this sense. Um, as opposed to a roguelike where you 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 have much more room for error as far as movement goes. Uh, cool. So yeah, in today's uh, episode, what I want to do is I want to add a room to the game. Uh, and so normally in this game, um, rooms are uh, procedurally generated. However, um, you know sometimes I actually do want to manually create um, a room um, just to give give the room a little bit more character. Um, cool. So, so recently, one thing I built was a script, uh, which will export, um, which will accept a, a TMX file created by a tool called Tiled. And what it will do is it will import that file and then uh, modify it into a format uh, to be uh, accepted by the crossover game. All right. So, so this here, this is what Tiled looks like. Tiled is a great open source free tool. Um, which is used for uh, describing um, and designing levels as used in games. Uh, and so, for example, here's a level that I had created previously. Uh, and so, so we see each level has six layers. Um, however, the, the importer tool that I wrote only looks at uh, three of them. So that tool looks at the floor layer. So let me toggle that. So you see that the floor, of course, contains uh, floor data for the level. There's also floor deco. Uh, actually, that one's not used in this level. There's mid. So these are things like sort of in the middle of the game. Notice how the bases of the torches are in the mid layer, uh, the enemies in that item there. Um, and then the other important one is actually, I guess that's it. Mid, floor deco, and floor are the only ones we care about. Um, player I'm not using, uh, ceiling I'm not using either. Um, even though we see that. Uh, information does exist in the tile layer. Uh, notice how I can toggle the the tops of the torch. Um, however, that information is not actually used when I export the level. Um, and so normally in the game, as you move into rooms, uh, you move in on one of the edges of the room. Um, so in that sense, it's sort of like, um, you know, Legend of Zelda, um, you know, Binding of Isaac, uh, games like that. And so each room ends up being a square. Um, yeah, really, much, really a lot like the the, the early NES, SNES, Zelda levels, um, sort of defined uh, the level design for this game. Um, so in this game, for example, like in the screen here, we see that you know we have all these pretty edges uh, that look nice inside of tiled. Um, however, it doesn't actually matter how pretty they look in this editor. Um, the format, once the data gets exported. Um, we we basically describe the floor as as boolean states in a sense. It's like here in this tile here. Actually, I can click it. Um, 
Oh, if you look in the lower left corner over here, you can see the coordinate. And so in this tile here, we see that's 1, 1. We see it's empty. 0, 0 is empty. Uh, 2, 1 is full. And so that's the only data that we're actually ex exporting from this tool. Uh, and so, so I added all the edges just to make it look a bit more pretty. However, you know, it, it really doesn't matter. Um, and so, yeah, in this editor, we don't see any doors on the northeast, south, south, and west. However, once this is loaded in the game, it could or could not have doors. And so actually there's a very complex system which uh, describes how the rooms are built and how they're imported. And I'll sort of touch on a various bits of it throughout this level. Uh, sorry, throughout this video. One thing to keep in mind is that um, each room can have a door on the north, the east, the south, or the west, or really any combination. So this level here, for example, will work with any form of level. However, uh, this level here, this level would only work with levels um, sorry, so this room here will only um, fit within a generated level um, if a door exists on the north and south. So in this level, for example, if a door was on the west or the east, and then if this, this room were loaded in the game, well, you'd have a door that ended here and then no path uh, to get to the rest of the level. And so that would be, that would cause an error. Um, and so there's all these rules that prevent this room, for example, from being loaded. Um, when it when it shouldn't be. All right, so here we have sort of a blank canvas. Um, as you can see, we have what is it? I believe it's um. So so each one of these rooms is eleven by eleven units. Um, however, effectively, we only really have nine by nine um, that I can actually define um, uh, the tiles for. Um, and so for this level. So I kind of have to figure out what I want it to be. Maybe um, let's make okay. I haven't made a level like this before. So let's make a level for a room that is T-shaped, and so that is to say uh, that a door could exist on the left, uh, the door could exist on the right. Actually, ignore that. Um, if I make a level, so one thing I want to do is once I actually create this room, actually I keep saying level and room, sort of uh, swapping them. However, um, I'm specifically building a single room uh, which will exist within a level. Uh, and so I'm actually not going to create a T-shaped room because that would actually be harder to demo to you. So at the end of this demo, I actually want to show you it running in the game. Uh, and so um, some, of the, some of the things that describe these rooms is the constraints. So one constraint would be that this level could only load in a, in a T-shaped room slot. Uh, and so I don't want to actually do that. So what I'm going to do is I will make a room uh, that'll work with any uh, possible combination. So any combination of doors on the north, east, south, and west. All right, so let's see. I also have a bunch of um, tile sets in the lower right corner here in the tiled interface. And so these describe um, you know, the different uh, tile sets used in the making of the game. Now the, the exporter tool that I use only works with certain tiles. Um, this this one here. This is an old one. Um, here we go. This is this is the important one here. Um, and so let's see. One one thing that I open sourced for this uh, game is something called an auto tile generator. And so here you see these different graphics. These represent sort of every possible permutation of um, tiles and their edges. So for example, if I draw this here, uh, this tile is intended in situations where the map would look something like this. Uh, so we have blanks on the left, the top left, the top, the top right, and the right. And then so see how the edge of this tile um, has sort of this edge that um, butts up against those empty spots. And so for every single one of those possible permutations of um, you know edges versus um, you know not non-edge non-edges uh, part of the tile, um, they exist over here. So this one here, this is like U-shaped, the left, the bottom, the right. Uh, this is the top, the right, the bottom. This is the right, the bottom, and the upper left. And so this one, for example, if I put that here, you know, perhaps, um, you know, the, the edges would look something like that. So we see that, um, you know, this, this darker gray area in the center can move upward to here. Um, it can move to the left here, and then the edges expect this to be empty, and then these to be empty. 
Um, and so, so while I use tiled, I'll perhaps manually uh, line up these tiles um, with the edges just to make them look pretty, or sometimes I'll be lazy. For example, while making this level, I could simply uh, you know, describe the level like this. So see how it's pretty boring? It's um, just dark purple, light purple. Um, however, if I were to export you know, data in this format, um, once it's imported into the game, it would go from this ugly version, which I've described in tiled, you know, to like this pretty version here, um, where the edges line up as expected. But I'm going to undo those changes just so we have something pretty to look at. Uh, and so, so in this level, perhaps this level represents uh, the entrance into a new floor. Um, so it'll be the first room uh, that you get that you enter uh, as you enter a new floor um, in the game. So, so floor and level are synonymous. And I apologize, again, I keep using the word um, level when I mean room. Um, all right, so one thing I want to do is I want to describe where this stairway into the uh, room will be. Uh, and so in that case, I need to put the stair in the middle layer. Uh, I'm going to perhaps, I'll just put it here in the middle. No, I'll put it, I'll put it over here. That looks like a fun spot. Cool, so when the player enters the room, they'll enter over here. Um, the game doesn't support entrances and exits in the same room, so I'm not going to use an exit. Um, and so in this room, maybe I want to make it sort of a fun little maze. So um, when you're actually in this room, you have to uh, maybe walk around in a certain pattern to get, get to what you're looking for. Um, let's see. So, so maybe what I want to do is I want to add a chest in this room. And maybe I'll stick the chest over here for now. I'm also putting that in the middle level, in the, sorry, the mid layer. Um, normally chests will be randomly spawned within um, rooms within a uh, level if, if there are doors between rooms which require keys to open. And now I have a whole other uh, module which I op also open source which sort of builds levels, describes every room in them, uh, where the locks are, where the keys are, uh, etc. Um, but again, that's all sort of handled for me. I don't have to worry about that within this tiled editor. All right, so let's see. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the erase tool. I'm going to clear out some of these tiles. So let's see if I, maybe if I clear these out. Um, this looks kind of interesting. So what this is saying is that there could be a door in the north. There could be a door in the east, south, and west. Um, however, if there's a door in the north, Actually, this room could be pretty hard. So the reason this could be hard is the player could walk into this room. Uh, they would then uh, land here. Um, so actually, I suppose that's not as big of a deal because this is an entrance room. But if this if this weren't an entrance room, if, um, if this weren't here, if this were just a normal uh, room in the middle of a level, and if the player did happen to enter on the north side, um, and if there were a mage somewhere in the room, the mage would then uh, attempt to move over here and then start lobbing fireballs at the player. And so what that means is that in some situations the player could load this room um, and they would face um, a situation that they cannot avoid because if the player is forced to move down this hallway and if there's a fireball coming at the player the player would not be able to dodge and they could be forced to die. Uh, and so that's not fun so um, so this pattern wouldn't work with the game. So let me think, I could like fill these in. Perhaps what I could do is maybe something like that. Uh, whoops. Oh, so I started drawing the in the wrong layer. Um, and if I do that, uh, the exporter will, will work incorrectly. So actually if I, I'm gonna hide the floor, I'm gonna toggle the mid. So here you can see the mistake I made. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna erase these, put the floor back again. I'm going to fill the floor in. Let's try that again. So I'm going to select the erase tool. So I can do something like that. If the player walks in, they'll move here. They're probably not going to be immediately killed by a mage. Um, I think I think this layout works a little bit better. Let's see. I don't know. It's kind of interesting so far. Um, let's see. I could erase these. Nope. Not enough room to dodge. Let's see. Maybe if I take what I have, I'll try to make it symmetrical. 
kind of neat, maybe. Player comes in, has to move over here. Player comes in, has to move over here. I guess that's kind of fun. Let's see. Let me add the, the stairs back. I'll put them here. Um, let's see. If I want to keep going symmetrical, um, perhaps I could do this. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't make sense at all because the player would walk out here but wouldn't be able to uh, get up over here. Oh well. Um, yeah, maybe I'll kind of keep like this. Some other things I can do is, you know, I could erase random segments like that. That kind of gets fun. Um, you know, as, as there, there's enemies moving around, um, the enemies have to walk an interesting path to get to you, uh, etc. Uh, I can erase these unneeded pieces. Yeah, it's all kind of neat. Kind of weird looking shape. Um, this chest no longer works. Maybe we'll get rid of that. Um, okay, so so currently what we have is, is the player can enter on the left, the player can enter on the right. If they do, they got to walk around this goofy path. But either way, they're safe from a mage. Actually, well, I suppose if they're a mage up here and a mage down here, uh, the player could be in a pretty bad position. But I don't, I don't think that'll happen. Um, let's see. And there could be a door here. I think this is kind of neat. Okay. Um, let's see, one sort of rule that I impose on myself with this game is that each room needs to have torches in it, and so torches, they're just a visual thing that look kind of neat, like, uh, you know, in theory you're in this deep, dark cave, and so if there are no torches, everything would be dark, and like, that wouldn't be fun, and so there's no technical reason to add these torches, um, but I just like to add them for fun anyways. Oops. So I'm adding the fire in the mid. I shouldn't. Those should be in the ceiling. Cool. All right. So I think this looks kind of interesting. So this right here will sort of represent a generic level. Um, it's got a bunch of holes in the floor. Uh, it's got these torches. Um, the torches don't obstruct the player because the player... Uh, actually, I can show you what that looks like. If the player, for example sat here the player would be behind the fire and so the fire doesn't actually obstruct the player it just kind of a I think that's an oblique projection uh, that's going on um, neat so so with the way this this level currently works um, this would export and it would look fine um, uh, again despite these uh, these auto tiles not being set up correctly another fun thing with these levels is maybe traps um, and so traps can hurt the player, perhaps like every third turn. They can also hurt enemies as well. So in this case, I could put a trap in um, these two spots. That's kind of fun. And so for example, the player can move, move, move. Maybe if they move again, they'd get hurt. So maybe the player would just wait and then move again. Uh, and the player can use it to the player's advantage. So you know, with uh, the damaging of enemies, that can be a useful thing as well. Um, so yeah, this is kind of neat. Um, I, know, I suppose another interesting thing about the game is you can put this sort of um, litter around the level and it just adds slight variations that make it look better. However, the litter is actually automatically generated for me. Um, it'll be persistent uh, per uh, instance of a room. However, if this sort of room blueprint were used multiple times, then the litter could be different. And so if this appeared, for example, three times in the same floor, um, each one would have at least a slight variation to it. Also with this room, I'm not going to add enemies manually. Um, I'm going to let them be added automatically. Um, which means that every time this room is loaded, uh, the enemies would be uh, automatically... They'd, they'd be different. Um, and then I don't need to, but I'm just going to add a few more things to this level just to make it look prettier, to give me a better idea of how it will appear for the player. And so these these are just like little shadows, or not shadows, but they're like the uh, the stone floor descending into darkness. Uh, looks kind of neat. Uh, this tile set here is actually um, created by somebody else. It's it's um, you know free to use. Uh, they ask that you attribute the name of the artist. I don't know the name of the artist off the top of my head, but certainly it is in the uh, credits in the game. Um, so yeah, we can sort of see how. Uh, you know, this level sort of looks looks kind of cool. 
the player can move in. There's this big area in here where the fighting could happen. Um, let's see. I don't think I'll set it up. I don't think I'll constrain this so that it's only used for entrance rooms. Um, but I will mark the center here as being the focal point. So the focal point is useful for, for a few things. So if this does happen to be an entrance room, or if it's an exit room, or if it's a room with a, a chest containing a key, um, I will ensure that the uh, that special positioned thing, the enter, the, the exit, or the chest, is uh, located in the center of the room. Um, if it were over here, for example, you know maybe that would kind of feel weird. So if you came in from this door, you'd be like, boom, boom, you're done. Or if you came in from this door, you'd be like, oh my god, I got to go all the way over here and go get it, and I get the thing, and I got to come all the way back, and it's boring. Uh, you know, nobody wants that. And so, you know, putting them in the center usually feels kind of right. Um, let's see. So there's also other decorations that I can add to the room. So currently I have four torches. Those are uh, described as decorations. And so if I wanted to, I could, for example, put in, you know, like this, this bookshelf with a cool little uh, animated um, skull candle thing at the top. Um, but yeah, I don't think this room really needs it. It just kind of distracts. So I'm going to delete it. Okay, cool. So this looks kind of neat. Uh, I'm going to save it. And so I have actually described, I have a notation described, actually, let me just pull that up real quick. So this level generator, oops, that's the game. Uh, the level generator I use is completely open source. Um, if you do npm install roguelike, you get this, this uh, package with all these different level generators going on. And so specifically, um, uh, let's see, I'm using odd square room generator. It's I guess it's kind of a goofy name, but it kind of works. So this room generator only generates squares where the widths and heights are odd numbers, uh, obviously. All right, and so actually, I don't describe the syntax in the room generator. I think I describe it in the um, the level generator. Okay, yep, here we go. Okay, so this syntax here describes uh, the different uh, types of rooms that can be generated. So for example, um, the letter represents um, the number of doors in the room, and then the number represents, uh, I suppose, the rotation of that set. So for example, if you have a room with four doors, there can only be a single rotation, so I call that A1. So the room I'm building will be an A1 room. However, since technically, I mean, it works with every single uh, one of these types. So, for example, if we used a B1 room with that A1 room I'm designing, we would have a door on the top and the right, but we simply would not have a door on the bottom and the left. Um, let's see. So, yep. So, so A A1 has all doors. B1 is the northeast. B2 is the east, the south. B3 is the south, the west, and B4 is the north and the west. Uh, and so, C. These are like corridors. They go north, south, east, west. Um, B's, these are bends, A's, those are all, D's are dead ends, because um, you come into the room and you immediately have to e exit. E is like a T-shaped, but I try to have the letters correlate to the shapes of the room, so E is like, it's kind of shaped like an E, maybe? That doesn't really make a lot of sense. F, F is, there's no way in or out. The room is F'd, it's F'd up or something. Um, this room wouldn't actually work in the crossover game. But it's kind of a catch-all, just in case, you know, programmatically, uh, this room is described as an F. Uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm currently building this A1 room. Cool. So, what do I want to call this? It's fun, it's sort of symmetrical, loopy. I'll call it loopy. It's like a loopy, symmetrical kind of room thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as, um, and then, yeah, sometimes I prefix it with the, the room type. So I could call this A1. Um, Loopy symmetrical. Okay, anyone loopy symmetrical? I guess that's kind of fun. So yeah, this is the TMX file. I think it's a, a tiled map. Something or other. Uh, but yeah, this is probably fine. It's cool. So I'm gonna save it. Now that that's done, I'm gonna go to the console. Um, and so here I have this utility um, which I use for. Um, uh, I have this utility I, I have to convert uh, that TMX format into something useful, um, a JSON format that I created for the game. So in this case, I'm going to run this uh, conversion tool. 
And then the first argument is going to be a path to um, the tmx file. So it's in resources slash a1 loopy symmetrical. And then another argument to this, I can actually rotate it. Um, unfortunately, the game isn't currently able to um, rotate the outputted levels. Um, so I might, I might add that in the future. Um, but otherwise, currently, I need to manually rotate it. And so, for example, if I had a, a level that was a bend, um, like a B1 that was the north and the east, uh, I would actually have to enter it into the game four times for the northeast, the east-south, the southwest, and the west-north variant. But in this case, since we're dealing with an A1 room with doors on the north, east, south, and west, it doesn't actually matter. Rotating it would really have not much effect. Um, cool. See, I'm going to run this. And what it does is it actually spits JSON out into the screen. It um, doesn't actually put it anywhere useful. And so this data here describes um, all the data uh, that I need to import it into the game. And so the kind of things I can define uh, in these rooms, I'm calling this format a room pack. So the, the data I can define in these room packs um, would contain the enemies. And so that's like the position of the enemy. Um, the phase of the enemy, because some enemies move like every other term. Um, perhaps the amount of health of the enemy. Um, uh, the direction of the enemy, if it's, a, if it's an enemy that can face north, east, south, west. I can also store projectiles. And so there's different types of projectiles. There's like a, a fireball, and then there's um, a projectile that can like shoot through many enemies. Uh, there's also traps, like how much damage do they do? Uh, what are the phase of the traps? Uh, you know, items, doors, chests, etc. Um, cool, but the only data where I'm actually using for this room is um, is the holes. And so, you know, that floor syntax, which could probably be described as a simple 11 by 11, so 121, you know, ones and zeros, um, I am actually describing as this complex uh, JSON. Uh, maybe I'll change it in the future, who knows. Uh, and then the, the decor looks like this, and so there's all this information, each one has like an XY coordinate, uh, perhaps some sort of identifier. Cool. All right, so you're probably wondering, Tom, what are you going to do with all this data? I'm glad you asked. So this data actually goes into a content management system. First, I'll describe the CMS to you. This is also open source. And so this, this is called Grill, G-R-I-L-L-E. So you can do NPM install Grill and have this content management system. So this CMS. Um, it's a little complex to set up at first, but then it's smooth sailing after that. So here's like a screenshot of what it could look like. So the CMS allows you to store tabular data um, using Google Spreadsheets. Um, and then you actually have a server that runs and then pulls data from the spreadsheets uh, when you tell it to. And then your game clients are able to download the JSON data from your CMS. It could be modified to perhaps upload the JSON data to a... Um, Oh, for example, a, um, a CDN, Content Delivery Network. Like you could put this data on Amazon S3 if you wanted. Um, but yeah, so, so this, this system's pretty powerful. There's sort of all this types of matrix data that we can uh, input into the CMS. Um, so now we've looked at the package. Let's actually look at my CMS implementation. Like, oh my god, look at all this data. So each, in this sheet, in this room paran sheet, this describes every single type of room that can be created. And there's there's like so much data tied to each room. It's I can't believe how, how much I let this almost get out of hand, I suppose. Um, there's so much data, it would be pretty difficult to describe it all to you. I'll, uh, I will describe some data, though, as I'm adding it. Also, look at the bottom, notice all these other sheets. So, for example, there's information about the, the different difficulties and uh, the items you start with, all the items that you can get in the game, uh, drops, which are uh, allocations, random uh, chances to grab those items. Uh, there are listings. Those represent um, the tutorial rooms and the uh, special challenge rooms. There's the campaign, which describes all the levels of the dungeon and the parameters that uh, build each level. For example, how many doors and keys uh, should exist on a level. Uh, room params, which we're looking at now, which describe the individual rooms which exist in the level. Enemies, which describe uh, you know their attacks, their movements, uh, their their sprite sheets, um, etc. Uh, tips, those are like displayed on the the home screen. They show you how um, 
It's fun little text tips. And then decor, that describes the decorations. You know, what a, um, do they block missiles from shooting? Do they block characters from moving into them? Uh, are they animated? Um, what should sit adjacent to them or like in the ceiling tile above them if they're two units tall? So there's, there's yeah, just tons of data that goes into this game. But now what we're going to do is we're going to import that level of ours, which I already forgot what it's called. Um, loopy symmetrical. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add it here. I'm just going to give it a new identifier. I'm going to call it loopy symmetrical. Uh, wait, that's that are the that's the odds that it's going to appear. So one thing that I'm actually going to do is I'm going to cheat and I'm going to force this room to be the first room uh, that I encounter. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a really big number. And so so the odds of this this uh, room being loaded are pretty high. Uh, the type of the room is an A1, and A1 will work for anything. So I'll just leave it blank here. So this is saying, at any point in time where we create a room, um, what we do is we go through the sheet and we, we match all the criteria. And so in this case, an empty array is very permissive. Um, let's see, flow, this, this sort of describes where it exists in the room, or sorry, in the, in the level. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it an, an enter. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna force this to be the first room that you see when you enter the whole game. Um, and so level, what level do you require it to be? If it's an empty array, that'll be anything. Uh, so I'm gonna force it to be only, it'll only work on the first level. R once, should this level only ever be uh, encountered a single time? Uh, I'll just set that to false. Um, then this data here that follows, um, these three pieces of data describe, um, if we do do the random layout generator, these parameters are used to create the room. However, in this case, we've manually defined the room, and so we don't want to uh, specify uh, any of those parameters. 10% um, of the tiles will contain that litter that I showed you before. Uh, no additional decorations will be added. Uh, the number of enemies that I want to have, I want to roll an eight-sided dice, so 1d8. Uh, I only want mushroom enemies in this room. Nah, actually I changed my mind. I want mushrooms, uh, eyes, and uh, death knights. Um, I'm gonna have the odds of an enemy being, enemy being spawned will be um, five uh, that the enemy is a uh, mushroom, uh, two that it is a, um, geez, I already forgot the name, uh, two whatever the other enemy is, and then a one that it's the death knight. Um, and then so each floor has their own default uh, theme and music, so theme and background music, so I'm going to leave those blank. Uh, cool. And all this information over here is used to describe um, the, uh, the very specific, uh, that room pack sort of information. Uh, so now it's time to start copying and pasting. So the spawn point, uh, which is the focal point of the room, is going to be 5-5. Five, five. So I'm going to paste that here. Um, there are no traps. Um, here's the hole information. So the holes are the lack of a floor. Um, I, I built this assuming that the floor would be mostly full, and so I then describe where the uh, floor does not exist instead of where the floor does exist. So I can paste that here. Unfortunately, uh, as I copy and paste this text from my console, um, there are new lines, and so I need to go through and fix them. Dollar sign, what is that? That's weird. Um, any typos in here can actually cause issues uh, in the game. Cool, I believe that's correct. I guess we'll find out. And then there were decorations too. These are the torches. Cool, so I've now inputted the information that describes the game. I could also describe like, like shop is a fun one. A shop will create a door and an item and then look up the cost of the item, and then the cost to open the door will be based on the cost of the item. Um, traps, yeah, I can add the traps, the enemies, etc. But again, this level is pretty simple. Um, cool, so I think what we have here is pretty good. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, rebuild my data from the CMS. So, npm run data. So this will download the data, um, parse it, from Google Sheets, it's a bunch of XML, um, and then it'll write the output um, as JSON data um, in the repository, which I can then check into 
and upload to my site. Cool, so there were no errors. I ran the ran the code and everything worked fine. Um, cool, yeah, we're probably good to go. So let's go ahead and run the game. So normally I use Firefox as my default browser, um, but all the all the running, all the game editing or in, uh, testing that I do, I do within uh, Chrome, because you know as this code runs on Android, uh, it's going to be running inside of a Chrome web view, and so the engine will be the same. And then as it runs on Safari, it'll run in their you know WebKit based uh, browser. I mean Safari is, is the WebKit kit based browser, and so in theory, you know Safari and Chrome have similar rendering rendering uh, abilities. Uh, I'll also run it on a device and use this tool down here uh, to debug the output. Cool, so now I want to um, start a new story and I already have our story running, so I'm going to clear my current story, yep, reset story, I'm going to go to the main menu and click story and then we should hopefully see that room um, that we just created. Boom, cool, awesome, it worked. Uh, no, actually it didn't completely work. Okay, that's interesting. All right, so so again, remember this room supports, it's like a, technically it's an A1. So if, if the room were generated with um, exits on the north, the west, and the south, they would have aligned it perfectly and it would still be playable. However, notice that we only have a single exit on the east, but you know, it's, it's still, I guess, mostly fine. Um, however, the, the problem with this room is that um, let me think. There are random traps everywhere. I'm not sure what happened. Let's take a look at the at the CMS again. So loopy symmetrical um, traps. Oh, geez. I went to put in a zero and I put in a nine. Zero. Okay. And then actually, I thought. Oh yeah, I did add the traps. And so the traps I put on the wrong layer. I put them on the player layer. Okay. My bad. So I go back to mid. That's where they're. That's where uh, the import tool is looking for them. So I'm gonna add the traps again. I'm gonna save it again. I'm gonna go back to the, the terminal. I'm gonna run it again. This time I'm gonna copy out the traps. I'm gonna go to uh, the CMS. Um, I've set traps back down to zero. I'm gonna scroll over here. Force traps. I'm gonna paste that in here. Cool. Now I'm going to download the data from the CMS again. And we see that we're done. Um, I'm now going to go back to the game and restart. Now, since I didn't actually leave the room, it shouldn't have saved. And I should still not have a story um, running, so I should just be able to start a new story. Here we go. There we go. Cool. So now notice that we ran the game again. Um, notice over here to the south of this mushroom. There are some specks on the ground, so that is some of the random litter. Um, notice that the two traps are here, and then that we have this time we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have all eight enemies. So actually, I'm going to refresh the game again. Go into story. Notice how it's different. So notice how we now have litter right here. There's litter under this trap. We have one, two, three, four, five enemies. Um, so each time we, we load this game, it'll feel a little bit different. Also this time we have a door to the left and the door to the right. And of course the way the gameplay works is that you swipe to move. Uh, you can wait a turn. Oh, that enemy over there just died. I uh, actually heard him die. Um, cool. So now that I waited, I can then swipe and kill the enemy. Uh, I can move here, move down, kill, uh, wait. I'm going to move here, the enemy moved into the trap. So this enemy here is rotational. Notice how the enemy, if I were to hold still, the enemy wouldn't be able to kill me. Cool. But yeah, I'll get more into the gameplay in a future video. Um, but cool. Yeah, so that's how we, we add the uh, content to the game. Um, now that the content has been added, what I can do is I can actually uh, add this data. Um, I'm going to commit it into git. Actually, well, I'm not actually going to commit it. Um, I um, Let me think. I don't actually want the first room to have traps in it or death knights. And so actually this doesn't make a good fit for a first room. So actually let me just fix that real quick. 
So I can hop back into the CMS. And so sort of this information here I added to force it to appear for this demo. I'm now going to dial it down a bit. And so typically the weight of the room um, for, for being spawned is just this arbitrary number of 10. So now I'm going to give it, um, it's now got a, a chance, um, you know, the, this weight of 10 as compared to all of its uh, adjacent rooms. Um, it's got this weight of 10 uh, when it comes to be spawned. And so I don't actually want it for an entrance. I want it to be somewhere in the middle of a floor. Um, it doesn't really make a lot of sense as a dead end. I'm going to put it in the middle. I could restrict it to only being an A1 room. So it can only load in places where there's a door or like another room to the northeast, the east, the south, the west. But those actually aren't that common. And so I'm going to leave this empty. Um, and then I'm going to allow it to run on levels 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, so this level isn't too spe special. I mean, it, it, it was manually created. Um, and so if the player were, encount were to encounter the same level over and over with the exact same layout, you know, maybe they get like a little bored. But I think it's, I don't think they're going to see it so many times that it would annoy them. So I'm not going to make this, um, this room only ever encountered once. Um, cool. So yeah, these, these numbers look a lot better to me. Sweet. All right, now that that's done, I'm going to run the data uh, generator one more time. Again, it's downloading data from Google Sheets. I'm going to add these files. I'm going to get commit um, added loopy uh, symmetrical uh, room program. Cool. I'm going to push that up to uh, GitHub. Now what I'm going to do, um, it's kind of lazy for now, but I guess it kind of works. So I've SSH'd into my server. Um, and then so what I do is I simply, um, I simply uh, pull, hmm? crossover, unable to write, uh, who cares? What's going on? Something's weird. Get status. Get reset. Package lock. Thanks, NPM. Could not write new index file. Something's going on here. I think I might have corrupted my Git repo on my server. Anyway, what normally what I'd be able to do is I'd be able to pull this data. I'd be able to um, run an NPM build, NPM run build script, essentially. And what that does is it um, you know takes all the the files that are the, just all the JavaScript files which describe the game. It uh, concatenates them, minifies them, compresses them, and all that stuff. Um, and then immediately makes the, the, the new data available for download. So the cool thing about the CMS system is that it's really easy to deploy new um, game content, new features. Um, you know, currently with SSHing, but at one point I'll, I'll eventually build a web service to do this for me. Um, but, but importantly, it allows the the it's easy to deploy changes to the game without actually submitting a new build to the app stores um cool so yeah i guess that's it for today's video um again we covered uh, the ability to manually create a room um, within a level within the game crossover and in the future i'll cover uh, more advanced uh, topics as well for example, audio creation, like all the all the music for the game I created myself. Um, also cover more programming stuff. Um, yeah, you name it. There's there's so much to do with this game. Uh, and again, if you if you like this content, please check out my Patreon. Uh, it is uh, Patreon.com/slash/tlhunter. Uh, awesome. Thanks for tuning in.